Well, hello there, happiness philosophers. Welcome back. In this video, I'm going to tell a story of how philosophy can help us in our quest to find answers to the happiness questions. What is happiness and how can we obtain it? Climb over the wall with me into our secret garden filled with philosophers. I'm going to introduce you to Socrates. Socrates, I believe that I have mentioned to you before, was condemned to death by the authorities in Athens and died in 399 BC. He was one of the most important of the Greek philosophers, but he never wrote anything. All that we know about the man Socrates and the philosopher, uh, we know through his student, Plato, who uh, wrote about him. Uh, Plato, by the way, was the teacher of Aristotle. And so the big three in uh, ancient Greek philosophy, uh, Socrates, Plato, and Aristotle, were all students of each other. Philosophy began around 600 B.C., 200 years before Socrates' death. Thoughtful men began seeking answers to questions about the nature of the world. They wanted to use reason uh, rather than rely on the mythology of the Greek gods as explanation for things. Uh, they asked metaphysical questions. They wanted to know what the nature of the world was. Why are things the way they are? And they asked epistemological questions. How do we know truth? How do we know anything, really? How do we know that we exist? They did not ask questions about how we should live in the world. Remember, happiness was a concern uh, of men. Uh, Herodotus wrote about it in 440 BC. Uh, but also recall that to these ancient Greeks, happiness meant good fortune. You would be fortunate. You would have good luck. Happiness was something that happened to you. Socrates did something very different. He started asking questions about how we should live. He insisted on the importance of character. The Greek word that he used was ethos, uh, which means character. Our word today, ethics, uh, is derived from ethos. Uh, ethics is examines how we should live in the world. It is moral philosophy. For Socrates, uh, ethics is concerned with the value of individual character. What kind of character should I acquire that would make me a flourishing and serviceable member of the community. This is moral philosophy. Socrates was the first moral philosopher. He departed from the position or the proposition that uh, human happiness was just a matter of luck. He felt that happiness was within human grasp. Stop there for a moment because this is a very important point. Socrates is saying that we humans, by our conduct, can achieve happiness. The point, though, is you got to work at it, it doesn't just happen. Uh, Plato has Socrates asking, What being is it? that does not desire happiness. He then goes on to ask further, 
since all of us desire happiness, how do we get it? Bam. There's our big questions. Now, Socrates' answer is that happiness, the good life, the well-lived life, requires good character. Okay, what is character? Well, your character is all of the qualities that make you distinct from others, especially moral qualities. Moral qualities are whether you act in a good way or a bad way. Do you know kids that lie, that don't keep promises, that are mean to other kids? What would you say about their character? And do you know kids that keep their promises, that don't lie, and that are kind to others? What would you say about their character? What would you say about your character? In ancient Greece, at the entrance to the temple to the god Apollo, on a column there, there were inscribed three maxims, rules of life. The first one is know thyself. The second is nothing to excess moderation in all things and the third was surety then ruin which doesn't make sense but what that means is that you have to beware of false certainty you got to know the truth and if it's false if what you think is false you need to be beware because that'll get you into trouble Anyway, the source of these maxims was said to be Apollo. Uh, they have, of course, been attributed to other men uh, over time. Perhaps the most important of them is know thyself. How do you know yourself? What, what does that mean? Well, you look at yourself, how you think, how you act, and you evaluate these things critically. Socrates said that the unexamined life is not worth living. Here we get a hugely important point for happiness. And it's part of the work that we have to do to achieve happiness. It's something that only you can do. This idea of self-examination, self-understanding, underlies most of modern psychology of happiness. Understanding yourself is a key to happiness. So look at that. Modern psychology here in the 21st century has a base in the wisdom of Socrates. See, I told you. You don't need all those modern self-help books. So here's an exercise you need to do, a happiness exercise. Set aside 30 minutes once a week and reflect on your past week. Did you do anything that you wished you hadn't done? Did you act some way that you feel bad about? Did you do something that you're proud of? that you can reward yourself for? Do you have some sort of unsettled feelings about something? Is it possible that maybe you acted wrongly or thought wrongly? Could you have been wrong? So go ahead. Nobody but you is listening. Admit to yourself any weaknesses that you have. And then think about how you can make yourself better. This uh, examining your life, as Socrates would have you do, is, is self-reflection, self-examination. 
You stand outside of yourself and observe yourself. Now think about that for a moment. Do something and then observe yourself doing it. I'm making this video. And I can stand outside of me and in my mind observe myself making the video. I can look at me making this from outside of me like a separate thing apart from me. I can be aware in any situation of how I act and I can criticize myself. This is an amazing property that we humans have. Uh, I don't think any other species had it. Uh, I'm, they may. But it's the ability to reflect. Now, I tend to think of myself as practically perfect. That's not uncommon for people. We are all, in some sense, self-righteous. We know we are right and others are wrong. Now here's an epistemological question. How do you know that you're right? How do you know that something that you believe is actually true? Can you say something is true because you saw it on Facebook or on Twitter or on the internet somewhere? Can you say that it must be true because the President of the United States said it? Epistemology teaches us that we're going to need a lot more than that to know if something is true, to know that something is true. If I'm honest with myself, I know that I am not perfect. And I know that often I am wrong when I think I'm right. Unfortunately, the same is true for you. We all have flaws. That's why if we want to be happy, we have to be honest with ourselves. If we are out of sync with our true selves, if we don't understand ourself, we can't be happy. This self-reflection -reflect is critical to happiness. When I was a teen, around 15, there was a great comedian out of Nashville named Brother Dave Gardner. Now, Brother Dave would uh, tell us stories. And I can hear myself now. I had all his records. I can hear him saying, I said to myself, self? Then he'd go on and talk about something, tell a story. But he was talking to his self. Now here comes some cool philosophical thinking. Here's the sentence. I said to myself, self. Okay, the subject of the sentence is I. The verb is said, the action word, and the object is self. So here's the philosophical question in this sentence. What is the I? What is the I that's talking to the self. It's like there's two yous. Two yous. There's the one that's doing stuff and the one that's watching you doing stuff. The you that's doing stuff is yourself. The one that's watching you do stuff is that I the reflective I. I mean, there's two different things, don't you think? 
Is the reflective eye part of your body? Or is it something separate from your body? What is that? It's a fun philosophical inquiry, and perhaps we'll go into that uh, later on. But whether this self-reflective eye is separate from your body or part of the body, it is very important. This I is your consciousness. What is consciousness? This I is your awareness. It is your soul. Your soul. Your essence. Have, have you, you've heard the expression soul searching? What's that about? Soul searching. Soul searching is looking deep inside of yourself self-examination. See, Socrates was right. There's two critical elements to happiness. Good character and self-examination. The unexamined life is not worth living. Now let me ask you a question. From what you have seen is Donald Trump, the President of the United States, a self-reflective man? Can you imagine that? Does Donald Trump have good character traits? Is he a man of character? Well. If you answered no to those questions, then my next question is, do you think he's happy? Truly happy. He's rich. He's famous. He's powerful. Is that where happiness comes from? Fame, money, power? This That's a big question that we're going to think about as we start looking at the question of what is happiness. Recall earlier that I said that Socrates said that character would make me a flourishing person and serviceable to the community, providing service to the community. Would Donald Trump be more serviceable providing more good service to the community, our country, if he had some character? Would we not all be better off if there were more true happiness in the world? How, how do we get more happiness in the world? How do we do it? Well, we have a part. We happiness philosophers. It's the number two component of our job as philosophers, and that's sharing philosophy. If we want America to be a better place, we need to do all we can do to increase the level of happiness. Wouldn't that make you happy? make me happy. We can do better. We should do better. We can have a better world. So, go out there, happiness philosophers. Spread the word. And the word is that you can be happier if you work at it. But you have to work at it. And philosophy can be your guide. Start today. It's part of your job. Share philosophy. Advocate happiness. Do it. And do the exercise. Examine yourself. Know thyself. And I'll see you next time.